Hello and welcome to this edition of Exotic Gardening UK, you watch Chris Weekly and in this episode we'll be looking at five jobs to do in the garden in January. Hello, I hope everybody had a really nice Christmas and looking forward to a new year. So we're going to go through five tips for things to do in the garden in January and the first couple of tips come from the greenhouse. Now the main thing to do really in January is to plan ahead for the season and one of the main jobs I need to do is to think about what I'm going to grow from seed each year and in January it's a great time to look online, get the seed catalogues, go through them, pick out the varieties you want and order them early because some sought after varieties do sell out pretty quickly. And in this little Yorkshire tin here, I have all the seeds that I've collected the last couple of years and the ones that I've ordered to sow in 2021. So, quite a lot of things. Some I know I'll be successful with, others it'll be a bit erratic if they do well. So, the first lot of things I'll be growing from seed this year are Aeonium, and that's Hirensi, and also Aeonium Tiabloformi. And I'm growing these from seed because they are fantastic Aeoniums, and not all Aeoniums you can just propagate vegetably easily. Some you need to grow from seed and these two really are much easier if you grow them from seed because they don't really have lots of branches. And the next lot of seeds that I've got are some of the selaniums and selaniums come in a wide variety of forms. But I've got a couple of spiky ones here that will grow really well as annuals in the garden. I'll be sowing them in future videos. And I've got loads of other things as well. So I've got some ornamental gourds, so a bit like pumpkins and squashes and they should be interesting to grow and climb over perhaps a pergola this year. I've got my ricinus seeds, I always grow and sow in April and these get to be sort of between one, two, two and a half metres tall with huge palmate leaves. We all know that they're poisonous but they're fine in the garden as long as you don't eat them. I've got my amaranthus, this year I'm going to be growing a purple amaranth and this is a different form from the normally grow. Lots of the amaranthus in the garden will sell seed and they'll be popping up next season, I'm sure. But this will add to the mixture. More riceness. And I've also, this year, especially for the children, I've got the giant sunflower. And this is a craven strain, so taken from a giant sunflower. I'll be seeing if I can grow some huge sunflowers this year. Got my bat banana collection, so got different musa species and onset species. Big red zinnias. I've got my They self seed in the garden, but I like to also grow them in plugs that I can plant out so I know exactly where they're going to grow. So I've got my Cleome Queen series mixed here. So we've got different violets and purples. And then I've also got uh, Musa sicimensis cross with Paradisica. So this is a hybrid banana, so we'll see how that goes. And I've got a lot of these seeds from Jungle Seeds, and also got some from Chilton's. And I've got these seeds from Mike Clifford that does lots of seeds, selling them on Facebook from his own propagation, his own garden. And I've got um, a white Cleome in here as well, which I got. Uh, Thompson Morgan's came with a free packet of seeds on a magazine. So plenty of seeds and obviously you've got to go around thinking about planning when you're going to sow these. But I'll be going through when I'm sowing my seeds as and when I'll do them this year. So January is a great time, like I said, for looking through all the seeds, catalogues, going online, picking your favourites and getting them ordered early. So that's what I've done. I'll be starting my Musa seeds and my Onset seeds pretty soon and others won't start till February all the way through to May. My second January job is actually to go around the greenhouse and just check over all your pots, make sure you can't find any pests and if you do, deal with them and also see if anything needs watering. Now the things that I've got here like these Aeoniums and Arid plants won't need watering at all yet. They can be very dry for months on end and they've still got some moisture already 
from when they've been potted up. But some other things will need watering. So I have got in the background, let's go over to the corner. We've got Brugmansias down there, and they do need watering from time to time. And they've just finished flowering again. So I will check on them. If I can lift the pot up and it's very obviously dry, then I'll give them a bit of water. If not, then they can just stay as they are. And if we just come around here, I've just brought in a few of these small seedling, well, a bit bigger than seedlings now, of these palms that don't really need to be inside, but I don't want them to get frozen solid outside, which I could do in January or February at this size. So I brought these in, and these, because they're in like a John Inns heavy potting compost, they feel heavy anyway, but these have got a lot of rainwater on them, and these probably won't need watering at all till about March. But we'll check on them. It all depends on the compost mixture and if they're sort of actively taking up the water. These, like I said, are heavy. I can tell they don't need watering. Whereas other plants, you can lift them up, and if they're in a lighter compost mixture, then you might need to water them. So, second tip is go around the greenhouse, check over your plants, look for dying leaves and remove them, look for pests, and just basically see if anything needs watering. But one of the worst things you can do is obviously give too much water to a plant that's basically dormant. So hold back, it's better to be dry rather than soaking wet. So now we're in January and we've had a mild winter so far. We've come to the coldest months of the year, so January and February. If you're going to get any sustained cold, it will be in these next couple of months. So now is a good time, if you haven't done it also already, is to get some straw, a big handful of dry straw, and put it in the crowns of your tree ferns. So if you look in here, I have put plenty of straw in here where there's that sort of depression at the top where the leaves meet the trunk. And I've just pressed that in and it will stay there for a few more months now, but it'll just protect that growing point when it gets sustained cold. If that gets really soggy, it's fine because it doesn't matter that it's wet at the trunk. You want obviously moisture around the plant, but if it starts rotting down, you can replace it, just turn it over or get a bit more straw and put it in there. And that's no problem at all. If you decide to fleece your tree ferns, then you do need to check every so often to make sure it's not gone super dry in there if water can't get through. So January, time to protect your tree ferns if you haven't already done so. So another job to do in January is to protect your half hardy plants that you leave in the ground. So that includes things like dahlias, gingers and here we have the pink china colocasia which is harder in the ground and it will get through winter if you don't protect it mostly but I just like to give that protection because it's very quick and easy to do so. I just use straw so here you can see the stems of the colocasias still and I've just piled straw in and around the plants all over the ground. You can cover this over if you wish but I just leave it like this Yes, it does get wet, it will get soggy after a few weeks and months, but the colocasias don't really mind, and same with the dahlias and cannas as well, and the gingers. So this is the sort of protection I give to my half-hardy plants. I even have colocasias that live year-round in the pond. So this again is colocasia pink china, still got a leaf on here. That stays in the pond margin, completely submerged all year-round, and it seems to do fine. This one's been in here three or four years now. It comes back every year. Never gets to be a big plant, grows much better when it's in soil and gets more nutrients, but it just shows that they're quite adaptable and can be completely waterlogged in winter. You don't have to use straw to protect your half hardy plants in the ground. Here I've just used some conifer branches just to cover over this canna. And over here for my Amicia zygomeris, which is a sort of a half hardy, borderline hardy shrub to a shrub that's been cut to the ground. I've just used loads of palm fronds just to cover over this area and it'll stop any penetrating frost, ice and snow getting into the heart of the plant. So you can use any sort of material really that will just ha act as like a physical barrier and give a little bit of insulation from those really cold nights. And the fifth and final thing to do in January in the garden is to enjoy the plants that are still looking good. If you've got lots of evergreen plants, like this acacia behind me that's coming into bloom right now, then you've got lots of interest. So it's worth going out in the garden when it's not too cold and slippery and actually enjoying what we've got. So things like the acacia, like I've mentioned, the palm trees are evergreen, we've got the bamboos, 
We've got the tree ferns if it's been mild. So there's lots of things to do and enjoy the garden. So thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK Yorkshire Christmas Weekly. Join me next week where we'll be doing more in the garden.